Well, good afternoon. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And we got a really super, super cool story for you today. Um, that if, if you are someone who is in downtown Eugene and you are carrying anything from packages and gifts or shopping stuff that you've purchased, or if you're someone who is uh, right now not in a home and all your life belongings are with you and you have nowhere to put them, it's a really dangerous situation to have that on the streets. And right now, can I talk to you really fast? Sure. Okay, yes. so you are? Well, I go by Jenny, which is my nickname most of my life, but I'm Nancy Ann Rose, officially. Even got this. To prove and it. you're from Tucson, originally. Yes. And yes. you're now in Eugene, and you're without a place to live. Well, I am staying at a hot, um, Timber. Oh, you're so staying I, at the Timber Hotel. But a lot of people that come here don't have a place. And and so you have a bag full of are those all your belongings there in that bag? No, I have four bags that I have to deal with. I just took this one today, and I'm very grateful because I'm working on something that's very that I really need to, and it's very important. And until I can sit down and work with it, I have to drag it everywhere, and it's really hard. And if you leave, if, if you were to leave that somewhere, yeah, you risk. Um, having it stolen, everything that you yeah. really, everything you have is in four bags. Yeah, and they're all important. And I, I, so I figure out what I need to do. And until this happened, which is wonderful, by the way, um, it was really hard, you know, to get things done. Right, because when and you're can, when you're normal. trying to hide bags or move bags or you, and and, yeah. and a lot of people, unlike and yourself, are up. who aren't staying in a hotel, who are on yeah. the streets, they don't have anywhere to put that stuff. Yeah, that's true. And I and I might be one of those people because the reason I'm here is to have been um, I'm allowed to be in one of the, the the places, but you have to wait sometimes a year to get right. in them. And I, I'm trying to be very careful with my money so that I'm not on the street, and I feel for them a lot. This is really a good thing. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. Did you get on there, Josh? Did it go to? Did it go to that? It's six, nine, five, nine. That's the code into it. Okay, so you guys, yes, we are downtown Eugene, and come here, my dear. So this is. The downtown day storage service. Now, this is a city of Eugene project, but who else would take care of something and operate it like this? But St. Vinny's, and you are. I am Michelle Pollard. So you're uh, kind of part of this whole program. I am, yes. So tell me about what you do. So how does this work? It opens at 9:30. It opens at 9:30. Um, anyone can come and drop off their bags. Um, they get a ticket to pick up their bags. Pick up is at 4:30. Runs seven days a week um, for anybody. So why is this so important for folks who are downtown? I mean, you know, anybody can, just so everybody knows, anybody can use this, but obviously it's specifically targeted for people who are homeless, who don't have, I mean, like this woman that just talked with us, I'm, you know, you have four bags, what are you gonna do with those if you don't have a place to stay? Absolutely, um, the good thing about it is most of these people have their, all their belongings are in these bags. Um, it keeps them safe. Uh, we've got it tended 24 hours, or excuse me, eight hours. Right, day. Day. Um, so 9.30 to 4, 4 o'clock. Absolutely. And and the people have to register as well so that you can make sure you can keep track of the stuff for yes. them. But that also, really, the what I love about St. Denny's is you're always trying to connect with people. So, yes, this is a service that's needed. The city of Eugene needs it. They don't. You guys are the ones who are going to operate it. But you guys then can keep track of folks. We do. And really try to get them the help that they need rather than continuing the cycle. Yes. Um, we like to give out uh, referrals if somebody is looking for housing. We've got a, a bunch of different referrals that we can refer people to. Um, there's day centers, the Lindholm Center, there's um, drug and alcohol counseling, there's uh, clothing. Um, you, you guys have you have so many programs we can't even talk about all of them, but you, your whole main mission is to really get these folks connected to our, our culture. Yes, definitely. And what we're doing here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. There's another surprise person over here. <clears throat> Come to me. 
<laughs> look who's here. So get under the, the, we look better when we're under here. Oh, okay. That's and that is super, super important. Oh, yes. So um, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing down here. Who First, tell them who you are. I know who you are. Well, okay, I'm Shelly Cordeville. Um, I'm the director for Eagan Warming Center. But what I do right now during the summer is not associated with Eagan Warming Center. Uh, so, so you guys are actually handing out water. Yeah. This is the third or fourth year that I've done this. Usually I do it with another volunteer, Mud A, and he wasn't available, so Chris is helping Chris McAllister, me. a yes. mutual friend of ours. Yes. And you just walk around downtown and distribute cold uh, water. We go to Washington Jefferson Park, and usually what we do is we pull around ice chests on this little dolly that I have, and all over the park, deliver water to people, kind of check in on people. I mean, I've called cahoots a few times because people are pretty, you know, the heat affects them. Right, I think that's what people forget, is we always, when it gets below 30, we know the Egan Warming Centers are gonna open before mm -hmm. below freezing. But we forget that when it gets 97 degrees out, um, that it's just as dangerous as, as the cold for a lot of the people that are here on the streets. Oh yeah. Yeah, because really, there's no place for them to get out of them, really. And so, what we do is we come downtown, and we, you know, pull around ice chests. Um, last year, I did it alone one day. I couldn't even get the ice chests up over the curb. It was funny. A man passing so, by had to help me. So why do you do this? I do you. it because it's the right thing to do. It's just the right thing to do, and how can I not? I mean, we go through Glenwood, we go into Springfield, um, we give water for people's pets as well. I don't want to see people dying from the heat, right. just like people dying from the cold. How can we let our folks die on the street because they're dehydrated, they're not doing well, they're getting heat from. Those are important things. And this pod, this this day center, this is really a cool kind oh. of progressive, innovative, um, compassionate idea. Oh yeah, I would love to do this in Springfield. Put a pod in Springfield. Mm -hmm. How do we get the, oh, we got to get the city to do that. Yes. So if we could get the city of Springfield to put a pod somewhere mm -hmm. um, that people could just go and put their stuff mm -hmm. and St. Benny's can run it for them mm -hmm. and operate it and then we've got both communities looked after. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you're, kind of an, you're kind of an animal about this aren't you? <laughs> it really is important. It is and there's some vacant property not far from City Hall and the is. library. You know exactly a big where vacant it's lot. Yes. Where there is right by the railroad tracks. Yes. And why wouldn't we want to use that for something good? Can you imagine lugging around all this stuff all yeah, day? Long? I can. No, I honestly, in I never thought a, about it till I came down here. Heat. Yeah, and and I never thought about it. And you guys look behind us. This is what we're talking about, right in there. So there's people's stuff. They can bring it here. Because can you imagine having to haul? And here's the thing that I think is really super important. Um, your, it's not only your stuff, but I'm sure if we went through that, that their stuff, which we would not obviously, but there's children's pictures. There's there's. Sure. There's social security numbers, there's birth yes. certificates, there's things that you take when you lose your home mm -hmm. that are the most important things in your world. We already had a lady mm -hmm. drive by here and she screamed out the window, best idea ever. Yes. And I thought, you know, that's kind of what you're looking for, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, yeah. the, that's the whole idea here. So Josh mans the booth here. That's mm -hmm. Josh back there. So Josh, come here, buddy. Come here. He's not going to get away with this. Did you get everything spread where we wanted to get it? Yeah, oh, yeah I, think, I, think so. I think so. Okay, so w what do you see when you're down here? I, I see all, all walks of life. People who are just going shopping, uh, that want to store their bags for the day, people who go to the library. Um, there's an antique dealer that comes in who shops around Eugene and stores stuff here and there. But the majority of the people are, in fact, homeless and do store their stuff in here for the day. Relieved when they find you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They come in and they just can't think it's enough how much is it helping them. So what do you learn as a 24-year-old man um, about the world working for St. Vincent de Paul? That every, every little thing matters. There's a, there's a lot of people that may not look like they need help, but they do need help. 
And so anything you can do to help them and support what, what they're doing and what they're going through yeah. is beneficial to your community. Do you also find that everybody has a story? Yeah. Everybody's got a story. Everybody has a story yeah. and they have value. Yeah. They have great value. A lot You hear a lot of different stories from traveling, coming in, and the situation that brought them to uh, to use these services such as these. But there's a lot of good people in this town. They want to help everybody. Hey, Josh, thanks. Yeah, of course. All right, you go, guys. So, again, this is open. Is it, Paul, is this open every day? Yep. Every so, day. Monday through Sunday, every single day, from 9.30 to 4, 4.30. Four thirty, And you can, through September, and like I said, you can bring your stuff down. Uh, leave it here. It's secure. It's safe. All your valuables are safe. And then you can go do your day and come back in the evening and pick at 4.30 and pick up your stuff. So, um, again, City of Eugene Project, but uh, run by St. Vincent de Paul because they uh, know how to take care of people and know how to do this stuff. So, also, if you're on the street and you see the water lady come up, don't be afraid of her. <laughs> She's just there to give you some water. All right, you guys, thank you for joining us. Paul, is there anything else we need to tell him? All right, you guys, thanks again. And uh, share this on your page so other people around know the good things that are going on in our community because uh, uh, these are the headlines that should be out there, okay? All right, I'm Rick Dancer. Tomorrow we're on the pub cycle, uh, riding with a bunch of food cart owners and misfits like me. Is there anything else you want to, come here. Do you, are you with them? What are you? Come here, please. Yo, no, please. Will you come here? Right under here, because you look better right under here. Trust me. Are you gonna? You gonna do it? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, all the way over here, please. she has got something to say, guys. Okay. You. Come here. I'm trying to do your best for you because this is the better light. It really is. I think this uh, place is wonderful, and it's. I have to carry four bags around, figure out where I can store them, and um, most of the people that I meet here that are using it are just plain ordinary people, and I think that's really important to know, you know, that there's a lot of people looking for housing, which I will be, and I'm already talking to the people that do this, and they're going to help me. And I think that's important for people to So know. this is more than a place to drop your stuff off. Yeah. It's a connection for you. Yeah. It got you connected to what the services you needed. Yeah, because all over town you kind yeah. of can, you try to find those services. And it takes a lot of time. Yeah. And this is like. And this is, that's saying about St. B, they got everything. They just need to know what's going on in your life and then they can help you get this, yeah. this stuff you need. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, if I come out here, come here, young lady. We got to my dog then. All right, so who are you? I'm Josie Young. So are you uh, living on the streets? No, I live at the shelter right now. At the shelter? Yeah. So what's your story? <laughs> My story? Oh, I just make wrong decisions. You what? Make wrong decisions. You make wrong decisions? Yeah. Well, welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. Not just golf. So what, what should people know about folks like you? Oh, I've, we're all pretty smart. I have a bachelor's degree plus and we just make mistakes. Is there like a moment, like in when you do when you make that mistake, where you just feel like you can't come back? Sometimes. Do, sometimes. Yeah. Is that where you get? Do you get stuck in that? Yeah, it's a loop. It's a loop. Yeah. So what is that like? What was? Can I ask? What was the thing that got you stuck? Well, is my ex right now? So. So that got you, and then you just it, it, and it, so you feel like it's almost like drowning. Like you get under the water and you can't get back up. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you? What, where? What is your hope? Oh, to get, I'm getting disability and they'll um, work on top of that. So I used to program computers and now I'm at the shelter, so I don't know what happened. Is that kind of, is that pretty common, a story is, it, it's hard to really define the moment that happened, it just... Yeah, it, there's a lot of people with degrees there, so... How hard is it on the street? I don't try to be on them. How hard is it in the shelter? It's pretty hard. A lot of broken people that are angry. Really? Yeah. What are they angry about? Just how they got there. Are you angry? Sometimes. What are you angry about? <laughs> I love talking to you because I don't, you know, how else are people out here going to learn and how am I going to understand? You know, and what, the last thing we need is any more labeling. I'm so damn tired of people labeling people. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're a smart lady, right? Sometimes. Book smart. Book smart. Yeah. 
But when it comes to practical stuff, yeah. Well, good God, you're living on the street. Well, in a shelter, so you do have some book smart. I mean, some some street smarts, right? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. So where are you originally from? Well, I'm from Corvallis mainly. Okay. So. so what do you want? What do you if you if you dream about life? What would you like? What would your dream be? To get my masters. To get your masters yeah. and get in a home. Yeah, I once owned a home, so yeah. It shouldn't be Do you hard. have any children? No, I have that dog over there. You have a dog? Yeah. Well, that's your child, right? Yeah. yeah. So, been. are you happy? Yeah, I am. What makes you happy? Life. So, life on the street or like this is okay? Yeah. Do you choose it? No, I'm making steps, so. You're making steps? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. No, you're fascinating. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. That. Would you talk to me? I'm live on Facebook. Rick Dancer? Yes, I am. Yes. Can you talk to me? Yes. Okay, so who are you? Rodney Retzman. Rodney Lee Retzman. Are you from Chief here? Sport, but yes, I am. So are you living on the streets? Yes, I am. How did that happen? How did you get on the streets? I was kicked out of my house by my wife. So what's life like? What, where's your hope? What do you hope in? Well, I hope to venture gain. I hope to venture my own place eventually soon. How soon. important is this place here to you to be able to just drop your stuff for a while? Very important. What do you sleep in? Um, on the streets. I sleep at the state building. I sleep on the streets. Just on the streets? On the streets. Are you, do you feel safe? No. What's it no, like? No, I've been attacked there? repeatedly. You've been attacked repeatedly? Yes, sir. So how dangerous is it out there? Very dangerous. Um, some of these people have no knowledge as to what they could do or what could happen to them when they continue to do what they do. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Did Chris take off? 200 and... We have had... 200 and... I'm shooting some video of you if you're okay with that. You've already been on camera. Well, actually, yesterday was... You gotta take video of Zippy, the homeless dog. <laughs> Is that Zippy? Yeah. Jack so you guys, again, we are at the Downtown Day Storage Service Center. It's a pod uh, right down in downtown Eugene next to the library where people can bring things to leave for the day. And it's super important. Chris, come over here, will ya? So this is a friend of mine, Chris McAllister. Hi, everybody. And you're really strong into this, the issue of homelessness in our community. Well, it's something I certainly care a lot about, strong passion, yeah. How is this important, this, this day center? I feel it's important, and everybody has their own uh, reasons why, but it gives people a safe place to be able to put their stuff for the day. They can go get on the bus, they can go do interviews, they can go have a little bit of time where they're not worried about if their whole entire livelihood is about to disappear or be seized or otherwise be mishandled. Because if you, if you don't have a pod like this, mm -hmm. then your whole day, rather than trying to better yourself, it becomes about protecting yourself. It's about resource management at that point. Do you, did you leave your stuff on the bus? Did you leave it behind? Is someone else looking at it? Is it gonna disappear if you look the other way or if you go to the bathroom? I mean, there's so many other things. And with the, the absence of bathrooms downtown, where are you gonna put your stuff so you can go? Biggest misconception? Um, that uh, Just people, give me one, I know you have 100, but give me one. That there's a lot of options for people to put their stuff that there's other there's options for people to do this that this is something that is new there are lockers here and there but they're not open there a lot of times they're tied to being in a uh, in a uh, in a program so what's the next thing you'd like to see downtown more bathroom access safe places for people to shower safe places for people to get ready and take care of themselves so that they can start their day with a positive and dignified manner all right chris McAlpin, thanks <laughs> thank you take all care. right so there you go you guys that was really fun <laughs> we just used the pod and the story to get the story thank you so much for sharing that with me so there you go um, that's a little reality check for everybody um, it's a hot day uh, it's just as bad on their health for the folks who have living on the streets as the, as the cold weather so because of the city of Eugene and because St. Vincent de Paul is operating this there's now a safe place for people to put their stuff giving them one better chance at making a better life so before you judge inform yourself okay all right well I just had a great day <laughs> thank you Paula thank you so much for coming down
<laughs> You're welcome. All right, Josh, thanks for being here too. Yeah, of course. It's awesome. And Chris, thank you. All right, you guys, share this on your page. <laughs>